I'd like first to thank the scientific committee for proposing me as a speaker for this topic, which is barely explored in the microbiome field. We all know that studying the causal relationships between the microbiome and disease pathogenesis is challenging. And the setting of HPV and HIV, HIV co-infection turns out to be especially challenging because we add two more layers of interactions to an already very complex system. Our first actor is HPV. The spectrum of HPV disease is very wide. It ranges from benign lesions that can, however, heavily impact the quality of life and sexual relationships, such as a condyloma in the anogenital area, to high-grade uh, high intraepithelial lesions that can progress to cancer if untreated. And just as a reminder, infections with papillomaviruses are exclusively intraepithelial. There is no viremia, the access of antigens to lymph nodes is limited, and their clearance depends on local cellular immunity to resolve. So the role of the microbiome could be especially relevant by proximity in this infection restricted to the epithelium. Our second actor is HIV, which affects the pathogenic potential of oncogenic viruses, resulting, uh, resulting in increased risk of several cancers, including lymphomas, Castleman's disease, Kaposi sarcoma, liver cancer, and HPV-associated cancers in the cervix, vulva, vagina, anus, and oropharynx. And it turns out that HIV increases the HPV potential to persist and induce malignant transformation, and the effect on the, H, on the risk of uh, HPV-associated cancers is especially strong. In most cohorts, especially in those looking at more recent periods, HPV-associated cancers are the leading uh, cancers in people with HIV, with a striking increased risk of anal cancer, ranging from 20 to 100-fold change increases uh, compared to the reference population. And uh, our third actor is the microbiome which is likely affected by both HIV and HPV. Is there an, an HIV-associated microbiome? We are still struggling with this simple question that triggered the first papers in the HIV field some years ago. In the meanwhile, changes in the microbiome associated with HIV are an attractive explanation to the unexplained excess risk of HPV-associated disease in people with HIV. And because HPV-related cancers arise in the epithelium of different anatomical sites, which each have unique and diverse microbiomes, they may be uniquely affected by the microbiome, especially when the changes of the microbiota attributed to HIV share some common features with those related to some cancers, such as induction of the chemorenin pathway or alteration in the butyrogenic commensals. But for now, the evidence on the HPV and microbiome field is, is scarce and mostly associated. The majority of cancer microbiome research is dedicated to the characterization of bacterial profiles at the community level from patients. But the direction of the causal effect relationships are still unclear. Some studies, but not all, have suggested that there are microbial signatures associated uh, with HPV persistence, progression of cervical neoplasia, and genital inflammation. And among the bacteria linked to HPV-associated dysplasia in the cervical area, some of them uh, have uh, biological plausibility, such, in, such as increased lactobacillus abundance associated to absence of HPV or lesions, or increased fusobacteria and sniacea abundance increase to cervical cancer, uh, as showed in this study on the right. And studies investigating what pathways could be implicated are very, very scarce. I leave you this reference from a very nice study in Arizona in which the investigators profiled the metabolomes of a cohort of women with different HPV disease status. Some short and long chain fatty acids discriminated uh, with excellent capacity between women with cancer or healthy. And they concluded that the cervicovaginal metabolic profiles were driven first by cancer and also by genital inflammation, HPV infection, and the vaginal microbiota. Okay, 
So we are facing a complex and poorly understood interaction. As a clinician, I try to design my research to answer clinical needs. What do we do in the clinics? So HPV loves the areas with rapid epithelial turnover, and that's why we preferentially see lesions in the transformation zones of the cervix and the anus. And because of the common pathogenesis between the cervix and, and, and the anus uh, in, H in, in HPV, the last year, the screening uh, of cervical cancer has been adapted to prevent anal cancer in at-risk populations, including MSM with HIV infection or women with HIV and previous history or, uh, of HPV disease. And this is what to do, uh, this is what we do uh, for anal cancer screen. Uh, we first perform an anal cytology and digital and rectal examination. And in case of abnormal results, patients receive high resolution anoscopy and we take biopsies of any suspicious lesion. If a high seal, a high grade dysplasia is demonstrated, we treat patients with different techniques such, such as high frication. But this strategy has several problems. First, a high resolution anoscopy is time consuming, needs expensive equipment, and the learning curve uh, is very low. Our trainees spend a lot of time sampling peppers and chickens before getting the necessary touch to gently biopsy a uh, lesion suspicious of high seal, as you can see in the pictures on the right, uh, before and after uh, biopsy. We invest a lot of time and resources on a single procedure. And the second problem has to do with the accuracy of the anal cytology. The test is sensitive, but the specificity is poor. And this implies that a random patient has an 80% probability of having a, a, an abnormal cytology, but only a 10% risk of having an underlying uh, high seal. So to prevent cancer, we need to perform an invasive procedure that most people don't like, and that includes taking anal biopsies to a, large, to a large fraction of people that don't actually need it. Although that's uh, the recommendation, we, the best recommendation we can give today. So we sought to investigate the anal microbiome as a potential diagnostic tool. We first performed a proof of concept study in 40 men attending our HPV clinics. We performed 16S sequencing, impaired and rectal biopsies, and stools of men with and without anal, anal dysplasia. And we came, up, we came up with a list of potential biomarkers of dysplasia. Okay, this was small uh, and proof of concept study, but it was interesting to see that some bacteria had a high discriminative power with a statistic about 0.8. And some of these associations were biologically plausible, as for example, the presence of pseudomonas previously associated with mucosal inflammation, which seems to, to be involved in the pathogenesis of anal precancer or the presence of bifidobacterium known to promote anti-tumoral immunity, which uh, was in this case linked to the absence of lesions. Okay, but remember that we had used the microbiome from anal biopsies. It would make little sense to use this kind of sample to develop a microbiome-based diagnostic tool if what we want to avoid is precisely unnecessary high-resolution anoscopies and biopsies. So we designed a next study on 130 MSM. And in this case, we used samples obtained with an anal cytobrush, where we performed 16S sequencing. And although we did not find a difference on alpha or beta diversity, we detected 40 potential predictors of high seal. And interestingly, we were able to demonstrate that the diagnostic capacity of anal cytology significantly increased when considering the relative abundance of the four bacterial biomarkers more strongly predictive of high cell. More specifically, with the cytology, we had 35 false positive cytologic results, accounting for a quarter of our population, and the combination of these four biomarkers with the anal cytology, we classified to true negative all except one of them uh, and showed uh, good diagnostic uh, performance. 
So we thought that it made sense to try to move forward to investigate a microbiota-based screening of anal cancer. And we got funding from the European Union to try to validate such an approach, including groups from different countries across Europe and more than 300 patients providing samples obtained by anal set approach. And we included a discovery and a validation cohort. I can show you some preliminary results. Subjects with biopsy proven high cell uh, showed decreased alpha diversity compared to those with no lesions. Although these groups were not separated at the beta diversity level, where we observed some clustering that was uh, associated to the research sites. And surprisingly, the list of potential biomarkers indicated by let's say, uh, analysis was much smaller than in the previous study. Maybe because this study involved more research sites and this introduced geographic uh, variability in the microbiome composition. Sniathia, uh, which has been associated with sexually transmitted diseases and cervical cancer, was the only shared genus uh, associated with high seal uh, in both studies. We have also explored the included uh, biological pathways using PyCrust, and we find differences between, group, between groups. I won't name them all. Uh, these pathways were associated to the synthesis of vitamins and cofactors, amino acid, and pyruvate fermentation, which was the more differentially overexpressed uh, pathway in the high seal group. And we have extracted the proteins from the anal samples and analyzed the proteins by mass spectro spectrometry. Uh, to then perform a microbiome taxonomic and functional annotation. The Prevotelasia and Lacnospirase families are the most active in the anal epithelium, accounting for one quarter of all the bacterial proteins identified. And proteins implicated in translation, ribosomal structure, and biogenesis, carbohydrate transport, and metabolism, uh, and energy production are the most uh, represented. We have also followed a bioinformatic, a bioinformatic protocol uh, with a strict statistical criteria to determine the proteins associated with the presence of precancerous anal lesions. And we have identified six proteins overrepresented in the high uh, seal group, as you can see in this fall change and volcano plots. In these box plots, you can see the overrepresented proteins. I won't name them all, so I don't get into a mess. But interestingly, five out uh, of six proteins have been uh, separately previously associated with cancer pathogenesis. We realized that, or rather, Manuel Ferrer, our biochemist, uh, realized that three of the protein biomarkers, namely GAP1, PK, uh, PJK1, and ENO, are part of the glycolysis pathway, indicating that this pathway may be particularly relevant for the development of anal cancer. And these three proteins contribute to the transformation of glyceraldehyde free phosphate, which is a main product uh, of the pentose phosphate and glucose metabolism into, into phosphoenol pyruvate, which is a main product of the pyruvate uh, metabolism. So we then checked in the protein data for the expression of three key enzymes implicated in the production of our substrate, remember, glyceraldehyde free phosphate. And we found that the expression of transketolase TKT was expressed in, in, in high seal, but not in a, no dysplasia, although the differences did not reach statistical significance. Significance. So, our data suggests that glyceraldehyde free phosphate metabolism is induced in subjects with high seal. So we think that this pathway deserves further investigation in the setting of anal cancer. And we are now assessing the pyruvate pathway in our samples using targeted metabolomics. So wrapping up, uh, with regards with the microbiome and anal cancer, we first need a better understanding of the interaction of the interactions that which the microbiome could influence HPV, HPV persistence and oncogenic transformation. One of our next lines of research includes the investigation of microbiome associated modulators of HPV oncogenic transformation that we have named MAMOTS using in vitro models. And we also need a clinical oriented agenda as we try to do with the studies uh, uh, I showed you. 
HPV is one of the areas in which we could envision a microbiome-based medicine if we are able to use it, for example, as a health uh, in the screening of subjects with anal precancer, or even uh, therapeutically, if we learn how to target the anal microbes to enhance HPV-specific cellular immune responses or HPV humoral responses to vaccination. And with that, I would like to thank all the research group involved in, the, in, uh, in these studies, our, uh, our study participants, our funders, and also all of you for your attention. Thank you very much. Bye.